province has come down with, you betcha, some guidelines. The province has finally put together guidelines for us to follow. Yay! Today, we're going to read through them and uh, give you some suggestions on how you can uh, make it even better. <laughs> So the province came down today finally with guidelines for hosting and attending celebrations and ceremonies. I've, I've printed it out here so that we can read it with you and kind of go through things and give you some tips here and there. Uh, hopefully this doesn't run on too long. I'm not going to read the whole thing, just uh, the key specific points that they make. Uh, one quick thing that I do want to suggest uh, no point out though is that uh, the province is saying that um, if you're thinking of having more than 25 or 50 people before September of 2020 it ain't gonna happen they're saying that um, September 2020 is the absolute earliest they're gonna consider doing anything more than 25 or 50 people so that's the basically out uh, of the first two uh, or three paragraphs that uh, they gave us so uh, here we go the guidelines the following guidelines should be followed by event planners and hosts and attendees so here we go People are reminded to stay home if they're feeling unwell, even if their symptoms are mild. There's a website, uh, manitoba.ca. We'll put it down in the notes below. Uh, if uh, it has a list of all the symptoms, so you can check that out. Uh, discourage attendance for people at higher risk of experiencing severe illness. Uh, virtual options should continue to be made available for those who cannot attend in person. So uh, by saying that, they mean do the, the virtual video stuff, whether it be grabbing your phone and FaceTiming it or what have you, uh, or my, you, know, you could bring uh, guys like us in and live feed it to Zoom or YouTube Live or Facebook Live, that sort of stuff. There's lots of different ways that you could still include people, even though you're limited to 25 or 50 people, um, you, you could still include those people just virtually through through this, right? Okay. Consider creative options to hosting in-person ceremonies or celebrations such as vehicle parades. Uh, they did this at a personal care home on Mother's Day. Super, super cool. Uh, Drive-in vehicle ceremonies or drive-up vehicle ceremonies where each attendee and their household has a designated time to drive up and participate in a ceremony. So what this might require is, uh, again, maybe utilize utilizing uh, a phone feed via Zoom or what have you, uh, or a, a large PA system. Again, that's something that we can help you out with uh, should you need it. And then people can sit in on the hoods of their cars, they can, whatever. Or I guess it'd be a drive-in, so it'd be like a drive through Anyway, outdoor drive-in events should follow applicable guidelines, so we'd have to look that up. People socializing in person together are advised to physically distance themselves from members outside of their household except for brief necessary of exchanges. So I wonder, like, can you still hug? I don't, I don't. Traditional greetings such as handshakes, kissing, oh, and hugging should be avoided. So there you are. So you, no more of this. It's so exciting. Anyway, uh, traditional greeting. Oh yeah. Uh, as far as, sorry, as always been the case, members of the same household do not need to physically distance from each other. Good, because that'd be kind of hard. Maintain a single point of entry and ensure that physical distancing is maintained. Uh, lineups and areas where people congregate, uh, examples include a, a bar area or washrooms, should be monitored to ensure attendees uh, maintain a physical distance of at least two meters, aka six feet, right? Uh, if you're wondering what six feet or two meters is, the average height of a tall person, right? If you can lay down between you and the person ahead of you, you should be okay, unless you're short like me. Uh, floor markers may be installed to help attendees with maintaining separation and signs should be posted to remind the attendees. Now, for those of you who are planning an outdoor event, you're gonna be going, how the heck do you lay down a piece of tape on the grass? Well, there's a couple of options that you can do there, right? You can um, use pylons, you can use physical stands, you could use step ladders, you can use all kinds of stuff, right? You can use bricks, you can use, or if you really wanna make it really easy, you know what? Grass is grass, People, uh, landscapers and so on do it all the time. Get a can of spray paint, uh, make it not green. Uh, and spray paint every six feet. Just do a quick line, and then the next time you go through and cut the grass, guess what? Paint's gone. Landscapers and people do it all the time, so why not you guys? Uh, they're saying post external signs indicating COVID-19 physical distancing protocols. Uh, you see those everywhere. 
Uh, ensure hand hygiene stations are available at entry and throughout the facility. Talk to Ty and Shona at uh, Limitless Events. You'll be probably talking to them to probably talking to them regarding the tent anyway. So um, yeah, hook, they'll hook you up. Uh, seating arrangement should allow for a two meter or six foot separation between chairs. Uh, members of the same household do not need to sit two two meters or six feet apart. Uh, meanings if you're at a at a at a sixty inch round table. Uh, you can be side by side. That's what they're saying there. Uh, when standing at events, a two meter or six foot separation is also required for non-household members. So that means again, if you're neighbors, right? You can't be closer than six feet. Uh, quick note here regarding seating arrangements. The six feet is from the back of the chair to the other back of the chair. So um, it's not table to table. So when you sit in that chair and someone's sitting behind you, Make sure that the distance between those chairs is six feet, okay? Food services should follow applicable restaurant guidelines. I don't have those here, but we can find where those are for you. Uh, group meals continue to be discouraged as part of phase two. On-site snack bars and other buffet counters uh, should be closed. So they're saying no to buffet. Basically everything should be served, which is fine. It, it won't cost a whole lot more, if anything, to do it that way. Uh, and it seems a little cooler, personally. I like it. Do not have items such as salt and pepper shakers, condiments, wine bottles, or water jugs on the table to be shared between attendees. And they're saying do not refill drinks. So uh, red solo cups, you're gonna be going through a whole lot more of them because you can't reuse really, can't really them. Uh, consider alternatives to traditional celebratory activities such as bouquet and garter tosses. There is there is some really neat ways that you can do a bouquet and garter toss and, and not physically touch it. Uh, reach out to me and I will give you some hints on that because there's some really cool ways to do it. Maintain lists of attendees for 21 days to ensure appropriate public health. Follow-up can take place if an attendee is exposed to COVID-19 during the celebration or the ceremony, which means if somebody starts to get the, they may not know that they're sick for a few days afterwards, right? Uh, and they're saying keep that list for 21 days so that if somebody does get sick, you can start going through the list and making sure that people don't further infected people and so on and so forth. Dance floor should remain closed. Dance floor should remain closed. That doesn't mean you can't have dancing. That totally means you can have dancing. It just means that you can't have a dance floor. Again, there's ways to have dancing at the party and still have a good, good time without having a dance floor. And you can still stay six feet apart from each other. It's pretty cool. It, it, it is, honestly. Uh, live bands, examples include singing, musical instruments, that sort of stuff, should have, you know, follow appropriate guidelines. Uh, next point, all common touch surfaces must be frequently cleaned and sanitized with Health Canada approved disinfectants that kill viruses, including coronaviruses. Uh, washrooms must be, have frequent cleaning and sanitization. I think we can all agree, washrooms should be cleaned all the time anyway. Ew. The next one is really with, with, with our industry specific. Uh, shared equipment like microphones and speakers must be cleaned and disinfected, free, <laughs> must be cleaned and disinfected uh, frequently and after each use. Uh, if shared equipment cannot be cleaned or disinfected between attendees, uh, they cannot be used. So that means if you have to share a mic and you're not cleaning it, you can't use it, right? Uh, there's some, some cloths that you can put over top of it, some, um, uh, some windscreen type things that you can put on them uh, that might be able to help. Uh, I just say, use lots of microphones. Or what they're saying is consider pre-recording speeches to alleviate the need for people to share a microphone. Uh, yeah, great idea. Pre-record it, send it to a video. Everybody can watch it nice and big. Quality can be controlled, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and last but not least, for the distribution of diplomas, the diploma should not be directed uh, ha directly handed to the graduate. Rather, it should be on a table for the graduate to receive. There you are. There you are. We have officially have our guidelines, courtesy of the province of Manitoba. Thank God. Um, so we have our guidelines. We know what we can do. We know what we can't do. A uh, quick note from uh, our episode of uh, Let's Get Engaged. Uh, this past week, we talked to Ty and Shona from uh, um, Limitless Events, tent rental people. 
and they were going to go and check and make sure that the, the whole if you have a tent they say it's an enclosed space so it can only have 25 people in it but if you drop the walls you can actually have 50 now that has yet to be confirmed but it only makes sense right drop the walls of the tent use it the way it's supposed to be used as a buffer from rain and sun and that sort of stuff but leave the sides open the window go right through it uh, and you're good to go so let's get planning your 2020 event all right let's get happen we can make this happen and it can be fun and it can be engaging and you could still share it with people who can't be there let's get her done thanks everybody <laughs>